Hello. Welcome back to the Shimmy Show. Shimmy Triple X Twitter, Instagram, Shimmelis, Megbev. How you guys doing? I am broadcasting now from the Philippines, uh, Angeles City, Pampagana, as they call it, uh, where the girls are. <laughs> I'm actually here just on a short little uh, turnaround visa run from Thailand. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you're American or probably Canadian or most other countries, Thailand will give you a 30-day visa, technically 29 days or whatever. And if you stay beyond that, you have to go and exit the country and uh, get your passport stamped and you can come back in or whatever until you go and buy some like long-term visa and go through some other process or whatever. But you can buy a ticket and just book a ticket and most people aren't going to stay for a month anyway unless you're self-employed or some other shit like me. Webmaster, internet, video guy, kind of me. But anyway, I figure if you're going to travel 30,000 miles away from home, you might as well make it worthwhile. You don't want to go and spend, you know, literally two days coming and two days going, four days up in the air on a plane just to stay on the ground for fucking three or four days, you know. So you may as well make it worthwhile. And I typically will come for a month or two months or longer, whatever, and work on my laptop and whatever and do it that way. But to remain legal and legal immigration status, you have to exit the country and uh, get your passport stamped and come back, back into the country. So uh, last year I went to Singapore and Indonesia, and I didn't want to do that again this year. So I decided to go to the Philippines, you know, despite being like poorly treated and discriminated against before. And I really know that Filipino girls really do not like me and most other black guys. They'll tell me this to my face, like they prefer a white man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, most countries with... Most Southeast Asian countries with darker skinned people do not prefer other darker skinned people. So basically black people, East Indians, especially darker Africans such as Nigerians, fucking uh, Somalians and shit like that. They are not really looked, if, if you're darker than them, they really, really don't like you in most cases. Thailand is kind of the exception. They're a little more accepting being I don't know what has to do with them being Buddhist and Muslim and whatnot, but they're less discriminatory, definitely, in the Philippines. So while I'm here in PI, um, I'm not fucking any chicks or none of that video shit or nothing right now. It's like I'm just going to the massage places and whatever to get a standard massage, whatever, get my visa stamped every turn. But I'm doing this show to uh, mention this is actually a pretty good hotel. It's my second hotel this trip, and I wanted to show you guys what you get for uh, $18 US, which is pretty good deal. The one I just left was uh, slightly cheaper, but it didn't have air conditioning. Um, a lot of things in the Philippines are, uh, you know, if you're an American or whatever, you might be like, damn, this place is not up to standard, not, not up to code, because I mean, a lot of times the furniture is home built or handmade. It's, uh, you know, you can't expect the walls to be all square and everything to be perfectly aligned. And it's like, People make do with what they got, kind of like the Dominican Republic or whatever. So you can't you can't harshly judge an isolated island nation for not having a plethora of like imported goods. You know what I'm saying? Even though some parts of the places are built up more than others, you know. But there's my room is full of this is probably a homemade bed, a homemade wicker chairs and shit like that. It's got its own little flavor to it. But you know, if you're coming from America or whatever, you're used to shit just being standardized IKEA type of furniture and stuff like that. You might be in for a shock. So, yeah. Um, if you're a single male traveler, you're probably used to it or whatever, you know. But some people might consider PI Philippines like roughing it a little bit, you know, because shit is like, even though this room is kind of sort of okay outside, it's like fucking destroyed like a war zone in the street. I mean, there's literally like just crumbling buildings, big assholes in the road. I mean, there's literally not much good infrastructure in much of the country, you know, and even though I'm on a cheaper street, it doesn't matter. You could have a fucking four-star hotel and right next door to it, there's like a crumbling abandoned building with people just squatting in it and shit, you know, just broken. I'll take my camera outside, not my laptop, but I'll take my camera outside and shoot some footage uh, just of the streets or whatever around the neighborhood before I go, just so you guys don't think I'm bullshitting you. But this particular hotel for $18 US a night, and I'm looking at this on the screen right now. What is it? In Thailand, baht, it came to 480 baht with taxes and stuff, 12% and 10% service charge. 585 Thai baht 
or 18 US dollars. And this place is called Rumi, R-U-M-I. You guys can see that, Rumi or Rumi in Angeli City. Nice little map on the back of it. It's only about, I can, I can walk to the Walking Street District in about 10 minutes or so. Well, I'll take that back. I can run in 10 minutes. I can probably walk in about 20, 22 minutes or something like that. Or you can hop along these little chicken truck wagon things for eight pesos. They're really hilarious. I got to get video of this thing. You've got to ride on this, these hand-built, homemade school buses and jeeps. It's, it's an experience. And they pack them with like 25 motherfuckers in there. It's crazy. You're just jammed in there. This sardines, yo. So you can't do these things in America, so I take advantage of them while I'm here. But anyway, look this place up. I booked on Agoda. Uh, Rumi, R-U-M-I, apartment hotel. The room is clean. They gave me uh, a nice little welcome kit with some, like, paper slippers. They're way too small for my even small American-sized feet, but, you know, I got them on right now. <laughs> uh, the room's clean. The floors are clean. Uh, it's probably one of the nicer places in the Philippines I've stayed at, and for the money, it's pretty good. Downside, there's no swimming pool, but a little TV. I don't come here to watch TV. But, I mean, it's like it's a pretty decent place. And they even gave me a little welcome kit with soap and shit. And that's more than most places will do here for you. So, Philippines. Um, I'll give you guys a tour of the room real quick. Yeah, I want to do that first. Then I'll talk my shit about the Philippines and tell you what I've learned and whatever. Because I try to learn something from everywhere that I go to. You know, so. Real quick tour of the room with the laptop. Let me walk around. Uh, okay, this is outside. Can we see outside? There's actually, oh, well, those are bars on the window. I was going to say it didn't have bars. Nice little aparta hotel, you know, it's pretty modern compared to a lot of the places I've been to around here, you know what I'm saying? It's not like barbed wire and super duper high security and shit, but we get a nice little, uh, for 18 bucks, you get a nice little flat, flat bed, looks like about a full size, I would say. Nice little fucking, uh, <laughs> I like the touch there, nice little mirror on the wall in front of the bed right here, you know, so you can see the fucking bed and shit. This is another nice little feature you usually only see in single guys' rooms, too. There's a curtain that you can pull back here for the shower, so you can, if you're fortunate enough to have a little girlfriend or whatever, you can spy on her and look at her and wave to her like while she's in the shower. Keep that curtain closed otherwise. Um, little TV there, watching uh, Filipino news and shit on there right now. There is Wi-Fi. There's an older little closet that I haven't used yet. Let's see what's in here. Nothing. Oh, there's a safe. Like they say in Dominican Republic, where's the safe? Where's the safe? I don't use those things, by the way. I have nothing to use them for. And we have an actual real bathroom, or at least a walk-in bathroom, which is more than a lot of places have. You know, can you guys see that? Got your standard shower and... Uh, this is something kind of unique to cheaper hotels in Asia, the, the water heaters. You guys might not have ever seen them before, but many countries that don't have hot water tanks, you just plug, it's like an electric water heater, you turn on, whatever. So anyway, yeah, the basics are covered. You know, you're an American, Canadian, whatever, you'll have hot water, air conditioning, and uh, it's actually pretty rare to get a room that doesn't have air conditioning, but I did get one of the previous hotels. So having AC is a must because it's hot as fuck outside in AC Angeles City. And, uh, you know, I just haven't been doing too much here other than going to the massage places and they're, they're pretty reasonable or whatever. And uh, I'm not going to bother going to the discos and shit here and I'll tell you why. You know, so this, is, uh, this is my thing here that I do in AC Angeles City, right? All up and down this road here, uh, what's it called again? Don Clark, right by Clark Airport in SM Mall. It's called Don Juico or Don Wico or Joico fucking uh, road, the main highway road or whatever. Keep following it down the walking street and there'll be about, um, fuck, there's probably about a dozen little massage places on the street there, right? And these are mostly like, well... Probably 60 or 70% of them are like clean, regular massage places. There's a few... There's a few dirty places there, too. Not too many of them, though. They don't really do that shit much in Philippines, you know, whatever. So it's like um, I get to just have a regular massage for, what is it, 200 or 300 pesos, which is even cheaper than Thailand. We're talking, like, literally, like, $4 for an hour massage and shit, right? So, But just no extras, right? And that's okay. I, hey, if, I, if a girl can rub me for fucking $4 an hour, it's a great deal. 
do it all fucking day. I did it three times yesterday. I'll probably do it. Oh, no, I've already done it three times today. I might do it another time today. But in doing so, I, I get to have a conversation with Filipina girls who speak perfect English for fucking three, four hours. And I get to just, you know, we talk that shit, you know, while I'm laying on the table. And most of them tell me that they're looking for a white American man or a white Australian or white British, but particularly they want a white American man. And I'm just like, well, tell me why, 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 why? You know, and it's just that most of them can't explain this. T- <laughs> if, you, if you put them to the, put them to the test on the shit, but uh, they're, they're not, they're definitely not um, attracted to uh, black men, black American men. You know what I mean? Even though, even if it's not a physical thing or whatever, it's just they're, I don't like have a target on my fucking back, which is kind of a great thing in my opinion, because I get kind of a more real, uh, I get more of a real uh, conversation with them. And they'll they'll tell me straight up, you know, hey, you know, I'm looking for a white American man. And if you know any, if you know any guys back home and shit like that and whatever, um, to let them know, can you hook me up with them? Shit like that. I'm like, that's interesting, you know? Well, at least they're honest with me. I appreciate the honesty or whatever. You know, people like what they like for a variety of reasons. And you can't, at least I don't, force myself upon people or force myself where I'm not wanted, right? So I appreciate their honesty in telling me all this. So um, I think a lot of this goes back to some of my earlier shows about hypergamy or hypergamy, which is like along the lines of monogamy, monogamy, polygamy, polygamy, and shit, all that, all the same, uh, all the same multi-headed beast or whatever, you know, it's like, I understand that they want to have a better life and move out of this country and move to America or somewhere else where they have better opportunities or whatever, but they don't view, at least the Filipino girls I've come into contact here with in several massage parlors and public places. And I've known, I know a lot of them. I know a lot of fucking Filipinas. I talk to everyone, the fucking waitresses, the this, the that, the, from service industry to here to there, doesn't matter the level of education or whatever, they want a fucking white man because their perception is the white man has like the bread, he's got all the cheddar, whatever. Even though I live on a fucking whole street town neighborhood full of fucking white people in America, America's like white people land, right? But their perception, I guess, from here, 30,000 miles away, is that they've got all the wealth, resources, this, that, and the other. And probably also they have the they probably have the potential or net worth to uplift their entire family out of poverty, I guess. And I guess I don't look like I can do that or I'm not willing to do that. And they're probably correct in this, you know. So, you know, it's like I've been told that when you date or marry a Filipino girl, it's like you're you're including the whole family, like you're dating and including the mom, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, thirty other motherfuckers you've never even probably seen or never will see. And that's just the way it is. It's, it's a very, from what I'm hearing and what I'm experiencing, they were very like tribal kind of people. And I don't feel like America and most other Western countries don't, that tribal shit just doesn't work. I mean, it's like motherfucking, it's, it's, it's a hard knock life. Everyone's on a treadmill of debt trying to fucking stay afloat. So if you're trying to you know, float and send money back to fucking 30 other motherfuckers every month. It's like, Jesus Christ, why can't these people go and do their own thing? You know, just because you get paid a little more in your currency doesn't mean you got to tweak yourself because life in America is already hard enough. Like, it's hard enough just to have a decent standard of living in a safe neighborhood if you're working some shit job or whatever. So it's like, the question is, do you really want to go and you know, do the whole feed the children, we are the world, and save 30 other motherfuckers just because you want a Filipino girlfriend, you know. I don't experience that in Thailand, by the way. Um, I'm sure the hypergamy exists all around the world, but I would have to say that from my own life experiences, it is the most extreme with people from the Philippines. And I mean extreme, extreme, like, it's some shit. So I'd rather just, I'm not willing to fuck with people on that level. You know what I'm saying? I... I would like to say that I work hard, I hustle hard, I do what I can to uh, support myself, family. But I mean, this is like immediate motherfucking family. Like people I grew up with, people that I know, blood fucking relatives and shit that have known, people that have known me from yay high and this and that. I mean, you gotta like look at helping those kind of people if you wanna help anyone at all after you're helping yourself before going to fucking expand to, you know, this and that, fuck.
You don't see me sending money back to fucking Africa every month. For Christ's sakes. I mean, geez. I mean, like, what the fuck? There's got to be some limit to this here. You know what I mean? Jesus. So that's just my own personal take on it. I mean, some people, like they say, it ain't it ain't tricking if you got it, as T.I. would say. But it's like, where, where are the limits to this here? And I just got to say, like, man, like, more than 80%, more than 80% of the guys I know who have gotten involved with Filipino girls, self-included, have gotten extremely burned bad. Like, I mean, like, bad. I mean, like, and I've been fucked over many, 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 many times in my life. But, I mean, I would have to say, honestly, Filipino girls have done it the worst. I mean, because it's like it, I've I've been to the point where it's, I felt like I've been built up to here and just dropped like fucking gravity at 9.8 meters a second. So it's like it makes you wonder and second guess and question almost every interaction you've had with them throughout your life and that's my own personal feeling you know you guys can blast me on that or whatever but that's just what happened to me so maybe maybe the experiences are different from you other people maybe dave Chappelle and his wife are the exception i don't know i hope i don't hear anything bad about them in the future or whatever due to hypergamy or whatever that'll be the story of the century you don't say you didn't hear it here first in 2018 right <laughs> you know <laughs> fuck but i mean it is what it is man it is what it is the philippines is uh it is what it is wow now, now, granted, now the girls—they're very. There's some very sexy, beautiful people. They're a hybridized Filipinos are a hybridized mix of Spanish, uh, fucking Asian, Japanese, like just everything. They're kind of like Dominicans or whatnot. And I grew up around a lot of them in California and whatnot. I went to school with them. They're my friends and associates and shit like that. A lot of them work for me for the website shit. They make my fucking cartoons and do all kinds of other internet shit for me. But it's like. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just a different world over here. It seems very much incompatible with the rest of the world. That's all I'm getting at. So, like, Philippines, Philippines. I mean, my thing is, like, and here's my other thing, too. Since I kind of grew up in California, the Bay Area, around so many Filipino people, they're not exactly, I hear the white guys here talking about them, like, oh, they're like little baby dolls, and they're so tiny and perfect and all this shit. And I'm just like, dude, like, you know, these are people I went to school with and shit. I'm like, they're not in the least bit exotic to me. If they're, I'm, I'm more fucking exotic than they are as far as I'm concerned as a black slash hybrid Ethiopian weird motherfucker and Arab nigga guy or whatever. So it's like, I'm like, wow. But I mean, if you, if you look at it from the white guy's point of view, okay, yeah, they're considerably shorter, smaller, wayfish, model-like for them compared to the average American white woman who's like a motherfucking linebacker refrigerator size bitch. So it's like, I can understand where they're coming from, you know? They're tiny, they got little small pussy holes and shit and all these other neat little physical attributes. But I mean, does that is that alone warrant enough for you to go and travel 30,000 fucking miles to just come to a country that's basically a destroyed ghetto in many parts of it? At least this particular Angeles City, AC, Subic Bay, Metro Manila, whatever. I mean, the country is really fucking destroyed. So it's like, I would have to think that Filipino people would look at Americans, like white American sex tourist guys and shit, it's like they're nuts. Like, like I would, are Filipino and, are Filipino people, if they were able to, are they in mass flying to fucking Afri East Africa, West Africa, or the slums of fucking Trenton, New Jersey or some shit to go and fuck black girls? I mean, that's pretty much the opposite, the opposite extreme, right? So it's like, why... I don't get it, dude. I mean, the girls are pretty, but you're going to a really sub-poverty, like almost Haiti-level destroyed country that hasn't been rebuilt, and the infrastructure hasn't been fucking rebuilt or anything like that in many places, you know what I'm saying? It's like, is it really worth it just so you can have the little girls there? And I'm just like, to me, the answer is no. Fuck no. Now, I want to go somewhere where there's a nice climate, Warm beach, but modern infrastructure, modern shit, and people that actually like me for who I am, hence Thailand, hence, you know, Dominican Republic and other countries like that. But the country's got to have some minimum level of infrastructure. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't like just being around a fucking destroyed war zone and shit that's like, that's so fucked. You know what I'm saying? Where it's so tough to get a square deal and everyone's trying to hustle you every fucking which way around the corner. 
Like, I don't want to live in, like, a hyper-hustler society like that. Even though I'm getting accustomed to it now. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. My second time around, no, third time to the country here. So I'm learning a little more every time. You know, you, it's, there's definitely a learning curve. I wouldn't suggest the Philippines to be one of your first international places that you travel outside of America for. You know, it's like you need some training wheels before you come to this motherfucker. Even though they speak English, sir. You know, it's, it's some shit. I mean, it's like the girls are so fucking sweet here and so thank you, sir. Hello. They don't bow and why like ties, but I mean, it's like they're very sweet and very this and that. But it's like I, I question the, how genuine it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, you know, I just, you know, I, I've seen I've seen the flip side of all this shit. So I would much rather be with people that are. Uh, in my personal opinion, just more genuine. And that that's just me. That's that's the opinion of Shimmy, Shimmy Triple X from the Shimmy Show. You heard it here first. It's like, why not just go somewhere where people already dig you or like you for who you are versus what you're worth to them? I mean, it is, it, hypergamy exists everywhere, but it's fucking extreme here. It's so fucking extreme, it ain't even funny. So, um, yeah. That's, that's the Philippines or whatever. But anyway, um, if you decide to come here, I, re I do recommend this hotel. I'm going to leave a great positive review for it on Agoda. Again, this place is called Rumi or Rummy Apart to Hotel. And my current rate discounted was $585 baht, $18 US per night or whatever. And it's decent. The air conditioning's blowing cool. There is no swimming pool in this particular one. Uh, but it's, it's I. I. I've had much worse here. And also for getting here, by the way, to Angeli City, since I'll bring this up, on my, one of my first trips here, like fucking three years ago, I got ripped off and hustled super bad at the airport from one of the taxi guys. Like, generally in every country, an airport taxi driver is a hustler, but here it's so fucking extreme. The motherfuckers actually have, like, printed out and laminated uh, cards with fake prices on it. Like, Filipinos take hustling, this is the guys I'm talking about, they take hustling to the level of an art form, like they, they when they when they do a lot, when they lie to you, they actually have like props and shit and a whole damn like you might go to a restaurant and they'll have like two different menus with different prices with the same shit on it or whatever depending on you know what I'm saying. It's like they're very they're they're highly adept at scamming and lying and shit, you know. And my my thing is I don't want to live around people like that, you know. If it's like if you give in Thailand, even, for instance, if you give people a, a square deal, they're more likely to come back and recommend this and that. But if you just try to juice everyone at every single opportunity, it's like it leaves such a bad taste in people's mouth that it's like, fuck, I'm telling nobody to come to this motherfucker no more. You know what I'm saying? So my first trip here, man, motherfucking uh, guy told me it was $150, $160 or like 5,000 pesos or some shit to go from the airport in Manila here to Angeles City. Now, granted, it's a two-hour, three-hour ride or whatever in downtown Manila traffic or whatever, but that was like the flat rate thing, and the motherfucker had like a laminated thing saying this is the prices here and this and that, and the prices were double, triple what they actually were. The shit should have been like 60 bucks to 80 bucks for a private taxi, and I paid 160. This time around, I did some Googling. I found uh, a nice site called... Uh, this motherfucker called Red Red Cat Philippines or something. Just Google it up, and he's got he's got some info about how to get from Manila Airport to Angeles City, quote unquote, where the girls are or whatever. And uh, he recommended taking some bus, this and that. I couldn't find it, but I found a better alternative that was only 350 pesos. It was called Majestic Bus Lines. It's like a very nice modern Greyhounds, better than a Greyhound, but a modern air conditioned bus. There were only like five motherfuckers on it from the airport, and it was 350 pesos. Like, you know, it was like like nine dollars or some shit versus 160 a couple of years ago. So, if you just look around for these things, and I had to go find it and hunt for it in the airport or whatever, I had got in early. Uh, if you just look around for these things and Google things first, don't don't land here and start asking motherfuckers questions or looking like you don't know where you're gonna go. Because the fucking first thing people do is they're gonna look around and say, hey. That guy doesn't know where he's going. He looks like he's lost or he's never been here before. Scammer, scammer, scammer. Like, the sharks are circling you. As soon as you land, they got their eye on you. You know what I'm saying? 
As soon as I come to customs here, the motherfucking girl at customs letting everybody through. I'm the only fucking nigger in line. And it's like, oh, wait, sir. Hold on, sir. Um, when are you staying? How long are you staying for? I need to see your return ticket. I need to see this. I need to see that. I'm like, you're not questioning the crackers that hard. Why are you? Why are you what are you doing? I'm an American just like them. I'm not from fucking Nigeria or fucking Estonia or some other fucking, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? So that dark skin thing there, I mean, just as far as dealing with people in positions of authority, police and shit like that, it's not like a good look here. I mean, they're losing points in that respect. And I can just feel the racism and discrimination from people that are pretty much literally as black or as brown as me. I mean, they might be like the color of the other side of my hands or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They've got a beautiful color complexion to them or whatever. But there's some motherfuckers that are even darker than me. But either way, it's like, hey... I know what you're doing, man. Like, why are you trying me harder? Because my skin is not as white and pure as the fucking law. I'm not pink. I'm not from Australia, Britain, UK, Canada, or whatever. I got a long motherfucking name, all that shit, you know? So it's like, I can feel the discrimination. I know it's there. I know it exists, and I don't like it one bit. So as far as Philippines goes, you know, not for me. For the most part, it's not for me. Philippines is for the white man. White man's king here. So if you got pink skin, thumbs up. The girls are going to love you. But my warning to you is you may have a motherfucking target bullseye on your back with hypergamy written across it. You know what I'm saying? They know that they know, or at least they, I think they know, like this nigga knows he's, this, he's don't try. And he's like a local. He ain't got nothing to steal. He ain't got nothing for us to take. Therefore, he is of no value or no use to us. And that's really how I feel, honestly, from the heart, how they uh, look at me like that. You know what I'm saying? Probably here and back in America as well. You know? I've, I've had, I did a story on this other shit before. I had a Filipino girl in America that I grew up with ask me, do I have $100,000? Like, just, just like that. Like, who the fuck does that? I mean, like, weird shit. You know what I'm saying? Hypergamy, hypergamy, hypergamy. Always trying to climb the ladder to get what another motherfucking man has. You know? And I'm just like, why don't you just work for whatever the fuck you want? Don't be so goddamn materialistic. We're all going to fucking die, so just be happy with what you got. If you're not satisfied with what you got, work a little harder to get a little something better. But, I mean, the question that I ask is, why do you always want to have more better shit? Why not just be happy to have a better life, a better body, a healthier body, and live longer? Shit, you know, it's all not so materialistic, you know, it's weird, you know? You need a motherfucking thousand dollar telephone and all these bags and shit to be happy, what the fuck's... You definitely can't take it with you, but the more important question is why do you care what other people think about whatever? What's wrong with wearing bootleg clothes and t-shirts if they get the job done and they're like probably made in the same fucking sweatshop anyway? I, I just don't understand the logic of, you know. Anyway, I'm ranting again. That's That's the Philippines. That's whatever. It is what it is. I can't. I can't be, I, I definitely can't change people's minds about anything. I'm just throwing my opinions out there. So this is Shemmy from The Shemmy Show. You heard it or whatever, or whatever it's worth. But uh, I would probably advise um, black, black Americans in particular to not uh, fuck with the Philippines. My personal opinion, whatever. Know. Unless you're just coming here for the massages or something else. If you're coming here for a girlfriend or wife or whatever, even for hookers, I would probably put it a thumbs down and say just go to Thailand. Man. Go somewhere where you're liked and appreciated or if, or at the very minimum, at least where your money is appreciated. You don't want to be even spending money on girls and massages and hookers and shit like that if they don't really like you. If, if, if deep down they don't like you or have a disdain for you, why shop... Why spend money in a store that doesn't value your dollar as much as, uh, quote unquote, the white man's dollar? Like, doesn't it spend the same or whatever? You know what I'm saying? You, you, do they like the stroking pink dicks more than brown dicks? I, 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 I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I don't understand their logic, really. I mean, that, that, that's, some, that's some Uncle Ruckus shit there. You know, the white man's money just spends better, I guess. Wow. So anyway... That's that's my thoughts on the Shimmy show. I do like I do dude, I do think Filipino girls are very pretty, by the way. But they're not like the shit, the shit, the shit, as far as I go, as far as my opinions are. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're not they're not so in my opinion, their so called exoticness does not justify 
the additional travel trouble and turmoil that, that exists for it. So go back to Thailand or Dominican Republic or Colombia or fucking anywhere but here is my personal my personal opinion on things. And you can have, you know, I have like a much nicer place there, higher standard of living, cleaner, modern, the food is better. And I uh, just feel like, you know, shit's more genuine. There, there's, there's a whole, uh, there's a lot of arguments or debates on the internet about who's better, Thai girls versus Filipino girls. And my vote goes to Thai girls. I love Thailand. I like their Buddhist culture. I like how they buy. I like their respect and this and that. Filipinas, I'm just like, they really honestly, I kind of place them in the same category as black American girls who I also like and endear or whatever, but at least as far as uh, many of the, many of their uh, traits, ups and downs or whatever, they're, they're basically like black girls without hair extensions. You know what I'm saying? They got their own hair. They got a little bit more thicker ass and titties and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But, but and they both speak English and this and that, but it's like, it's just not my, um, not totally my cup of tea. I, li I like to go where I feel like I'm respected and treated well. You know what I'm saying? Or at least my dollars and bots or whatever are respected or whatever. I don't, I don't, I want to go somewhere where I don't feel like I'm getting juiced for my time and I can at least believe a certain percentage of things that comes from the girl's mouth. And that's important to me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the massage places here are all right, but they're even better in Thailand. Everything's better in Thailand. So, you know, my, they get my vote. So, what got? This is Shimmy shining out from the Shimmy Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Buy my movies, I want your money. And again, my opinions are just for me. Uh, you guys can think what you want to, write comments about what you like, don't like. I don't really give a fuck. It's my show, so that's what I think. I'm going back to Thailand. Peace and hair grease, y'all. I'm out of here. Sign it out, baby.